whether there was uh, any interest in commonizing the MBMU app transports. And to give you an understanding of why I'm even proposing this, um, it has typically ended up that, uh, at least in my case on the FC support and supporting it, we've been playing catch up with changes in the other transports. Uh, when it first started, we had RDMA implemented uh, the fiber channel transport took that as a code base and then implemented on top of that. And so we were actually pretty close for the first two years of, of uh, the implementation. And then uh, we got into a lot of things on fiber channel that had to deal with very long connect times, very long uh, reset times, and a lot of things that failed in the actual connection process that wasn't typical of a uh, uh, the way an RDMA connection or configuration was put together. And so we ended up solving a few things and it did cause the FC transport to actually change a little bit, such as changing the uh, connection process so that we reuse the reconnect thread, but it put us into an asynchronous process that waited on the completion of a work queue entry, which is very different than what's in RDMA and TCP today, which tries the original form of making the initial connection in the thread that caused the IOPTL to do the create, and then uh, having both a teardown path that's standalone as well as part of that path as well under error. But starting with those implementations and when TCP came in, um, TCP, I believe, encountered a lot of the same things we did. And they were keeping RDMA in, in sync with them, but what ended up happening is I think we went through about three different revs uh, or waves of issues where we, as a kernel, we're seeing issues in the concurrent rescan and teardown philosophy. And it caused a lot of rework around the queue freeze, start stop queues and so on. And really all I'm saying is that the way the transports were maturing at this time, they, they actually started implementing a bunch of these things in very different areas. And if you look in some of the cases for error recovery and deletion, what we do is actually, I mean, we ultimately get to about the same steps, but we do them in very different ways with different code paths. Some of that has been able to be pulled into the common layers. Others, are, it's just a lot of replication in the transports. So one thing that uh, I've always had at the back of my mind, um, which even at the beginning of the NVMe over fabric implementations is making a common layer with a lot of callouts. And I think initially we were trying to figure out what actually we had to do. So we weren't gonna stop and commonize it because we were kind of ahead of the, um, would be trying to do so before we needed to know what, what actually had to be there. But at this time, I think we've all kind of stabilized to a point where I think we can go back and remove a lot of the duplication and try and commonize some of these paths such that a lot of the interaction with the, uh, the block MQ layer, the request queues and so on can be in more of a common layer with a lot of callouts for the transports. Um, it will have an aspect of it that isn't as nice where there's a lot of callouts to the transports, not just a few routines because there are a lot of cases where we jump out and do transport specific actions. So uh, obviously if we rework that area, it will mean a, a stability bump. And uh, you know, my question on, on where I'm at is, does it make sense for us to even entertain trying to go down that path? And is this something to try and do for a long-term support model? So if there's any, so suggestions or any comments on this, uh, you know, let me know. Yeah. So the one thing where this already bit us is with a transport errors. Um, this is basically, again, an extension of the uh, connect issue that currently all transport errors are assumed to be retriable. So whenever the transport reports an error, NVMe will just rewrite. And the only way where we really can abort or terminate commands if, if we get an appropriate status from the NVMe, basically from the NVMe CQE. Only then uh, the command actually will be terminated. Which is causing issues during connect because it means if there's an error during connect, we will, as uh, Ewan said, we will continue to retry the connection until 
a timeout hits or if you're particularly unlucky lucky not at all, then we're just being stuck at connect. I did do some patch for fiber channels to actually check for the DNR bit and um, basically also allowing the transfer to fail the command if it figures out, no, we can't do a connect, so it really will, it should be failed. But this is a um, fiber channel only thing. And we would and I would now need to do the very same patch two times over again, one for TCP and one for RDMA, just so to have a consistent behavior across the board, which really is something which doesn't belong in the driver whatsoever, but rather should be handled in the NDME layer to even get, to indeed get a consistent behavior. And these kind of things really we should be, do far more, uh, far more often and just move things which are common really into the common layer and not just have each driver do the very same thing all over again. Yeah, the, uh, the other thing I remember recently was there was a state uh, added to, I think, the NVMe uh, state machine that got added to mm -hmm. some but not all of the transports. And so yeah, I, th and th and that, that, that kind of thing is probably one of the things that might gravitate you towards Absolutely, wanting to get and some that's, that's really part of the issue. And, you know, I don't really blame the patches because if you look at the patch history, it was kind of a, a subtle, in fact, actually the error didn't actually correspond to the areas modified by the patch and so on. It was just one random area that just wasn't caught by a particular state change. And to try and make a developer cover all the transports, like Connus is saying, is rather difficult. And most of this stuff that we're running into now is more common functionality. And, you know, if we add features such as uh, single connection loss without terminating the, the controller, we've got to coordinate that across all of the transports simultaneously. And, you know, the bottom line is I think it is a good idea to do this commonality. It's just are we willing to take some of this bump in, in some of the transport, well, well, in the three transports? I mean, my suggestion would be, right, that some of this stuff is sort of generic to NVMe fabrics, right? Mm -hmm. So perhaps what makes sense is to look at what commonality could be extracted out of the transports and put into the fabrics code, particularly the stuff that's, that's more yeah, closely tied exactly to the Yeah, and that's exactly what we do. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's if that's what you're asking, then I think that that's that's a straightforwardly reasonable thing to do. What I don't think we should do is put non-spec related stuff into the fabrics code just because it happens to be common, because that that stuff tends to track the spec pretty closely. Understood. Okay. So I I will look for the TCP and RDMA transport folks a little bit and try and get an answer and, uh, you know, bottom line, so far from the distros, it seems to be, yeah, they see the same thing I do, so, um, and we'd push patches for an RFC, so, thank you.